Hey yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Scatini09 and today I've got a brand new episode of cooking and gaming chat for you. Um, it's something I've been thinking about doing for quite a long time now. It's something that's been requested by some of my subscribers. It's something that I was surprised that people were actually enjoying. So I've decided to bring it back and hopefully it's going to be a success. But that success completely depends on how well you guys engage with it. You know, how much you enjoy it, how much feedback you give me. So hopefully it's going to be something really great, really something massive that we can all enjoy. But we'll take it one step at a time. So we're going to get right into it today. So what I'm going to be cooking today is a chicken curry and some rice. Uh, quite simple. There's a few, um, a few steps that we have to take in order to get this right, in order to get it to how I make it. Um, all the list of ingredients and the instructions and how to do it so it's easier to follow and you can just watch it you know enjoy the video um, I'm gonna put into the description below so you know just enjoy the video uh, get involved send me some comments you know yada 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 and we'll take it from there so the first of all what we need to do for this chicken curry we need to marinate the chicken so that obviously that's gonna take quite a while to marinate I mean you, you probably want a minimum of probably an hour to two hours to marinate your chicken but even better than that if you actually marinate your chicken and leave it in the fridge overnight that would be even better now I've not got that much time um, so I'm just gonna leave it to marinate just for an hour or two that should suffice there's only me I'm cooking for so that I'll do this is how you do the marinade okay guys so in order to marinate your chicken these are the ingredients that you're going to need so obviously you're going to actually need your chicken breasts uh, you can get it pre-diced if you want, if you can't be my word, actually cutting up a couple of chicken breasts. That's entirely up to you. I've bought pre-diced just because it saves, saves me a bit of a job. Um, you're going to need a bit of salt, some garam masala, some ground cloves, black pepper, smoked paprika and some ground cumin. You're also going to need some ginger and the juice of half a lemon. Half a lemon. Um, you can also use... Uh, the zest of it but unfortunately this is a waxed as opposed to unwaxed so if you're going to use the zest make sure it's an unwaxed lemon okay so first things first uh, for this marinade what you want to do you're going to get your your spices and you're just going to warm them up in a pan okay it's not going to take long all you need just grab a teaspoon so grabbing a teaspoon and we're just going to warm them up. So first of all, what we want is we want a heat teaspoon. Heat, not a level, a heat. So just get your, your teaspoon, a heat teaspoon of gram masala. Yep, one into the pan. So a heat table, uh, teaspoon of the gram masala. You're going to want a heat tablespoon of smoked paprika. So again, just a heat. I mean, I'm not talking about a mountain. I'm just talking about, you know, more than level, you know. So make sure you get that in. Then you're going to want a level teaspoon. Make sure this is level of ground cumin. So just a level teaspoon. And then you're also going to want a level teaspoon of ground cloves and put that in so we're just going to leave that in the pan just for a short time next what we want to do is we're going to get the chicken we're going to put the chicken into a bowl because obviously this is going to go then into the fridge and that's how we're going to marinate so just get your knife And then just tip this into your bowl. Yep, simple. Get rid of that. Make sure you wash your hands. Obviously, it is chicken, so any sort of chicken juice that you get on your hands, just make sure that you wash it off. Okay, so chicken's in the bowl. Yeah. So next, what we want to do, we want ginger. Oh, and you also, I did forget, you're also going to want some garlic um, in this as well. Put some garlic in your marinade. 
Uh, but first of all, we're going to get the ginger. So about a thumb-sized piece of ginger. You can see that. So basically, it depends on however much you want. I mean, you can use the whole thing, but it's up to you. So basically, you just want to take the sides off. Make sure you get um, the full piece of ginger. And what we're actually going to do, we're actually going to grate this into, into the marinade. So, so about that much. No, doesn't need to be a lot. You can get rid of them little bits. We're actually going to grate that in. So what you want to do, get a little grater. You don't need a, you can use a box grater if you so wish. You don't need to, but you can use one of these graters. I'm just going to grate it over. Like I say, just as much as you need, as much as you want really. It's up to you. I do like quite a lot of ginger. So you've got your ginger, get rid of it, any little bits that you might have left. So we can put that to the side. So we're going to get the garlic in there now. And garlic's the same, you can either chop the garlic, you can crush the garlic, or you can grate the garlic. However you want to do it, it's entirely up to you. Get a couple of cloves in there. Well, one may be sufficient, but I like a lot of garlic, so you know, two cloves for me, just for the marinade is you know is about minimum for me basically okay so just take the skin off everybody hates chopping garlic I mean like I say you can use a garlic crusher at this point just to make things a, a bit easier um, but it's entirely up to you that's um, you know personal preference basically rid of pick up all the skin get rid of the skin and we're just gonna chop this up just obviously like, be careful of your fingers you feel like you're losing a bit too much Make sure you just slow down your chopping. I mean, I wouldn't recommend fast chopping anyway if you're not very good at it. Um, so we're just going to pop that into the marinade as well. You're going to want a juice of half a, lemon, half a lemon. Use a full lemon if you want. You don't need that much. It's entirely up to you. Depends on how much chicken you've got, really. Um, I'm just going to use half. So just cut that in half. Now, you can either just squeeze it normally, or if you've got an actual juicer, just use your juicer. And obviously, that way... It, this will automatically catch any pips, so you don't want any pips in it. There we go, got juice. Let's cut all that, pour it in. That's more than enough. You are as well. Uh, keep don't bin that other half of a lemon. Lemons are amazing, so you don't want to bin that. Uh, you're also gonna want some olive oil in, in this. Um, some actual good quality olive oil. Don't need a lot, but you want a bit. I'll put that in there. Salt and pepper. So salt and pepper you don't need to put into the pan, but make sure you do add it. A good helping of salt and a good helping of pepper. I'm actually running out of this pepper. There we go. Okay, so that's that part done. Now we just want to toast them spices that we put in a little earlier. 
Okay. You don't need it. You, you're not cooking. The thing is, you're not cooking these spices. You're toasting them. You're just sort of warming them up. Okay, so you don't need a high heat. And it doesn't need to be on for long. Just give them a little stir. And once you start actually smelling the flavours coming through, that's when you know it's done. And that's when you just take it off the heat. Okay, so just make sure the heat's not on high. Because like I say, you don't want to cook it. You don't want it smoking. So just give it... Little toss around, just get it all mixed up. And already I can start to smell it and it smells gorgeous. Okay, so it doesn't take a minute. And you just want to get a spoon. Make sure it's all tossed and mixed up. That's it. I mean that that's as much as it takes. As soon as you can start smelling it, take it off the heat. Like I say, you don't want it to be cooking. And then all you want to do is just put this over your chicken, put it all in there, and then just give it a stir. Make sure it's all mixed in, all them spices, the olive oil, the lemon juice, get it all mixed in. You want all, the, the whole chicken needs to be coated. Keep stirring, make sure it's all coated. And yeah, I can I can smell it. You mean them flavours, that combination of flavours just smells so good. Okay, and then you're gonna clean off that spoon because it's had chicken on it. So here we go. So that's basically your marinated chicken, yeah? So we're going to put that into the fridge. So I'm going to just make sure it's covered. There we go. So like I say, this is just going to go into the fridge now. Um, like I say, put it into the fridge for an hour, two hours minimum, or for the best results, best best results, keep it in overnight. Okay, so whilst that's marinating, we're going to answer some questions. We're going to get into the gaming side of the cooking and gaming chat and then give that chance to marinate and then we'll be back with actually creating the sauce and creating the rice. Okay guys, so let's answer some of your questions. Okay, so my thoughts on handheld gaming compared to consoles. Um, I love handheld games, uh, I love handheld consoles, um, I've always owned a handheld console, whether it be Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy SP, uh, 3DS, um, the Vita, the PSP, I've always owned handheld consoles, and I love them, there's some great games on there, like literal exclusive games to the handhelds, um, some absolutely great games on there, some absolute classics. Um, and I definitely still feel like there is a place for it. I think Nintendo, definitely. I mean, their 3DS is still selling to this day. They've got an absolutely vast array of gaming, of games that are available on the 3DS. I think it's absolutely incredible. And I think they really own the handheld gaming space. Don't get me wrong, I think the PSP and the Vita are great systems. I really, really do. But in terms of their library, I don't think it's as vast or as great as what you can find on Nintendo's handhelds, I just, you know, that's just my personal belief. Um, I think there is still a definite market out there for handheld gaming. Um, I mean, me personally, like, I'm not going to use a handheld console out and about on the streets, just because, you know, they cost a lot of money. I'm not in the position where I want to be out and about in where I live in Manchester and get it robbed. So, you know, if I'm going to use handheld gaming, I'm still going to use it in the comfort of my own home. You know what I mean? But, you know, then it begs the question, like, well, why would you play on a little screen when you can play, you know, bigger, you know, more graphically capable games on the bigger teller? And, well, like I say earlier, you know, simple answer is, well, you know, you can get some great games on handheld so yeah, I definitely still feel there's a place for handheld gaming. I'm not sure whether or not Sony's going to create another handheld in you know in the near future. 
Um, you know, but we'll see. But I'm pretty sure Nintendo's got something in the works. I mean, there's already talk about this. Uh, their brand new console is going to be like a console handheld hybrid. So we're going to see how that works out. But yeah, definitely handheld gaming. <laughs> so is FIFA 17 going to be a big event this year for Manchester United fans? I am of course a Manchester United fan and to be honest I am excited for FIFA this year. Um, I was quite disappointed with last year's iteration. I mean like let's uh, let's just get this straight. The thing about me and FIFA like when I play FIFA I play online like religiously that that's all I do I play online I play online seasons that's all I do I buy the game every year to play online I don't play season I don't play career mode I mean I don't get involved in any of that I don't play ultimate team I just play online and if I'm going to play online and I'm going to be competitive online then I need a good team um I only use Manchester United when I'm playing FIFA they're my team you know I don't for, for sort of, like in my head, I feel I feel like I'm being disloyal. Even if I'm like, if I go and play with like a Barcelona or a Real Madrid, definitely if I go and play with a Liverpool or a Manchester City, you know. So I only ever play with Manchester United unless I'm playing like sort of with with like friends when they come across and I like, I'll just like just for a bit of a laugh play with a different team. Like, for instance, the other day, my um, mate come across and he's not very good at FIFA, so he was playing as Barcelona and I was playing as, like, Crystal Palace and I ended up, like, kicking his ass. But, you know, it's just, just one of them things, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I think um, I'm excited about it and I think a lot of Manchester United fans are going to be excited about it. The signings that we've made this year, I think it's going to put a lot of pace into the team on FIFA as well, which is something to be excited about. Um, finally get Ibrahimovic, Pogba... Um, Mkhitaryan into the team as well so you know it's going to be um, I'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to it I've already got my pre-order going so yeah one to look out for for Manchester United fans this year okay guys so now that the chicken has had some time to marinate we're going to get on with cooking the sauce I'm going to go through the ingredients that you're going to need to make this great sauce Okay guys, so in order to make the curry sauce, you're going to need a few ingredients. So first of all, you're going to have to start off with some olive oil. You're going to want some fresh coriander. In particular, you're going to want the stalks of the coriander. Um, save the leaves for garnish later, but the stalks or the stems, whatever you want to call it, they're actually going to go into the sauce. You're going to want some garlic. However much garlic you want, probably depends on how many people you're cooking for. Two, three cloves, even one if you don't really like the taste of garlic. You're going to want a green chilli and a red chilli. You're going to want an onion. Um, normal size, probably a large size depending on how many people you're cooking for. You're going to want a chicken stock cube, very important. A can of plum tomatoes, not chopped, you want plum. Now the spices, you're going to want ground coriander, ground turmeric, black pepper, garam masala, smoked paprika, and you're also going to want salt. Okay guys, so now that you know uh, what kind of ingredients we're going to be using in the sauce, um, it's around about this point you probably want to take the chicken out of the fridge. Um, I usually like to get my chicken as much to room temperature as possible, depending on like, time constraints. Um, I don't see the point cooking the chicken when it's still really cold because it's just going to take longer to cook. So if it's at room temperature, it won't actually take that long to actually cook it through. Okay, so this is the exciting part. This is where we start actually cooking. This is start where this is where we start making flavors and things get going. So just get yourself a little bowl. Just so if you've not got a lot of space, it's always good just to have a little bowl. Just because everything that you're going to chop, you can just throw it into that bowl and then everything goes into the pan uh, but to start off with we're just going to start heating up a pan don't need any oil in it at the moment just make sure the pan's getting warm okay so first of all we're going to um, chop the garlic we're going to chop the chilies and we're going to chop the onion okay so this is part one of the sauce Okay. 
to say, however much garlic you want, I mean, that's entirely personal preference. I mean, um, I know people who don't like garlic, which is absolutely crazy to me because I'm like, how on earth can you not like garlic? Garlic's probably in a lot of cooking and yet people say they don't like it, so I don't know. Okay, that's the garlic. Put that into your little bowl. That's all on one side. Your chilies, just make sure you give them a bit of a rinse. Anything like that, like, you know, should be, um, just give a, given a quick wash. Take off the stalks. Now, when you're using chilies, it's entirely up to you whether you want to de-seed them or not. I mean, if you de-seed them, that's going to reduce the heat they actually give out. I like to keep the seeds in because I like my curries quite hot. So, again, that's just personal preference. Now, for these, I just slice them quite thinly. I don't chop them and turn them into mush. That's why you won't see me fast chopping these, just because I want to be careful, because I want to slice them quite thinly okay that's your red chilli and you've got your green chilli seeds going everywhere tidying them up in a bit Okay, so your chilies, pop them into the bowl also. And then you're going to get your onion. This is actually quite a strange uh, looking onion, uh, but we're going to uh, deal with it. <laughs> so I hate, I mean, to be honest, I hate chopping onions. I'm no good at chopping onions whatsoever. I hate it. Obviously, whenever you're chopping, just make sure you're being careful. If you're watching what you're doing, you don't want to be chopping your fingers off. Something I've nearly done a few times, so, you know, like I say, just got to be careful. Okay, there's your onions, chopped, ready to go. Shall I just reduce the heat a bit onto this pan? Perhaps I'll just turn that off because it's going to stay hot anyway. Okay, so that's your chilli, your garlic and your onion. The next thing we're going to use is the stalks or the stems of the fresh coriander. Just open up your coriander. The usually coriander usually is tied with a bit of a like an elastic band, usually tied. So that's sort of your guide for where your stalks are. So you just want to give it a wash. Just give it a wash in the bag. Give it a good rinse. So you're just going to use these stalks now. So just chop where the stalks are. Once you start hitting the leaves, then you can stop. I mean, to be honest, at the start you don't need that much. Um, so once you start hitting the leaves, then you can stop. I mean, it's entirely up to you later on as well whether or not you actually want to add the leaves into the sauce itself. Or if you just want to use it as a garnish at the end, it's entirely up to you. I usually just have it as a, a bit of a garnish. Okay, so that's 
the first thing that we're going to send into the pan. So you've got your garlic, you've got your coriander, you've got your onion, you've got your chilies. Okay, so I'll just wash my hands a bit. Okay, let's get cooking. Okay, so I'll turn the pan back on. So you want probably like a medium to high heat olive oil. Get a good lug of olive oil in there. Wooden spoon. Just leave that to heat up for a few seconds. And then we're going to go in chilli, garlic, onion, coriander. I love that now. Woo, it's got too high. Look at my onion, man. Onions flying all over the shop. Yeah, so you just want to cut this down for a few minutes. Now that noise that you can hear, I've actually got the kettle going. You're going to want that for when you're ready to use your stock cube. You want about 300 ml of boiling water. Okay, so now that's cut down, we're going to start adding spices to it. So we've got the ground coriander. Now for the ground coriander, we're going, to want, we're going to want about a tablespoon of the ground coriander. So about a level tablespoon. Okay, throw that in. The ground turmeric. Probably about a heat teaspoon. Maybe a bit more. Garam masala. Another heat teaspoon, so just like the uh, the marinade for the chicken. Heat teaspoon. And another heat teaspoon of the smoked paprika. Going. The flavour's going. So add into this. You're now going to want to add your plum tomatoes. Just what a can of your plum tomatoes. Throw that in there. Just going to reduce the heat at this point. Kettle's boiled now, and we're just about to add the stock cube. So we'll give your tomatoes a good stir, make sure it's all, it's all mixed in. stock cube you're just going to crumble it into the sauce that you've already made so chicken stock cube by the way as I mentioned before so I'm just going to crumble that in so just get a measuring jug and you're going to want about 300 mils 300 mils of boiling water so 
So 300 mils. What you could probably do at this point, because obviously you'll still have some liquid in that in your um, tomato can. So just pour it into there. Give it a swill. And do it that way. Get the rest of that labour out. Put that over there. You can give it a stir now. So that's basically your sauce. So what you need to do now is to basically leave that to cook. Uh, you can also at this point just add a bit of uh, seasoning, some salt and pepper. Some more pepper. There we go. So stir it in because obviously you want all the um, the stock cube to sort of dissolve into it, melt into it. So we're just going to bring this to the boil. Once it's boiling, then we're just going to simmer it. So as you can see, it's just reached the boil now, so we're going to reduce that and simmer it. Just going to leave this to simmer now, leave it to cook. guys so whilst your sauce is actually simmering uh, you can put that onto another hob I'll leave that to simmer away because now we're going to cook the chicken uh, in terms of doing the chicken you don't need to cook it for too long you just want to sort of sear it on all sides make sure it's cut through I mean chicken can be chicken can be a bit dicer so you, you know if you want to just make sure it's sort of like just cut through only just cut cut through then that's entirely down to you and then we, we're going to cut the chicken separate and then put it into the sauce Okay, so I've put the sauce onto another hob now, so that's just going to sort of reduce, thicken up, um, just leave it to simmer, leave it to cook, you don't need to worry about that. Give it a stir every now and again obviously, but other than that, you don't need to worry about it. Okay guys, so for this step, in order to cook the chicken, um, it's entirely up to you on how you want to cook your chicken. Me personally, I'm going to use a griddle pan, so if you don't know what one of these, it's like a grill but a pan. Um, that's my choice you can either use a normal grill you can use the oven or you can fry your chicken however up to you but my preferred method is a griddle pan um, so what you're going to do you want to get this on a heat leave that to heat up get your chicken so this is your marinated chicken so once your griddle pan's heated up you want to get your chicken onto there you, just want, you can tip it on now however you, however you want to do it And then just get some tongs just to um, spread it all out. So again, just test it, put the oil piece. Okay. Good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so that chicken's about done. So, 
once the chicken's about done in the griddle pan, you want to take that off the heat. Okay, and now we're going to transfer it into the sauce. So bring back the sauce. Okay. Give your sauce a stir. Put that back on the heat, the sauce. Keep it on a simmer. And then be simpler, just go into transfer the chicken into the sauce. So get your tongs and just transfer it in. Now obviously this is quite a large portion. I'm not going to eat all this. I'm going to freeze some of this. So obviously I'm going to eat some tonight and then I'm going to freeze some so I can have it another day. Put it all into the sauce. All these little bits, get them all into the sauce. All this good stuff. Yep. All into the sauce. And now I'll just give this a stir through. And that's it guys, that's pretty much your curry sauce done, that's your chicken curry done. So the only thing left to do now, just leave that on a very very low heat and now we're going to make some rice. Okay guys, so now we're going to cook some rice, some quite basic rice, not going to be as fancy as that separate video I made, just some quick and easy rice. Um, so first of all what you're going to need, just get a mug, whatever kind of mug you want, like a builder's mug. Um, get some rice, whatever kind of rice you want, I'm using basmati. So I'm only making this for one person, so I'm probably not going to need as much as you might need. So let me just give you a couple of quick tips. If you want to make rice for maybe like two to four people, basically the quantities you want is one full mug of rice to two full mugs of boiling hot water. That's your quantities for two to four people, okay? I'm just making some for me, so what I'm going to do is half a mug and one full mug of boiling hot water. Okay, so get half a mug. There we go, that's about half a mug of rice. Put it into your pan. Okay, and at this point, um, I'd usually just give it a bit of a season, a bit of salt. Uh, you can add a stock cube to your rice at this point. Just to give your rice a bit of flavour, you don't have to. It's entirely up to you. I usually do. Um, that's just me. So I just get another chicken stock cube, because obviously this is a chicken curry. Just crumble it into, into the mug. Okay. Let's get a spoon. And obviously I've boiled the kettle. Pour the water into there. Give it a stir. And then just pour that into your rice. Then you want to put it on the heat. You only need to put this on a simmer. Just leave it on a simmer until it's cut through. So you want a low heat, stir through the rice obviously because you, add, you have added a stock cube and some salt so just make sure it's all mixed through. And then that's it guys, leave it on a simmer cover it, cover it with a lid, leave it on a simmer and there you go, that's your rice done. You don't need to touch that rice until it's done. You'll know it's done because the rice would have absorbed all that water, fluff it up, serve it with your curry and then you're done. Okay so at this point guys, once the whole meal is just about done and you're about to serve it up, it's entirely up to you um, what you want to actually serve your curry sauce with. 
um, whether it be some naan bread, some pita bread, um, poppadoms, entirely up to you. I did want to serve this with some naan bread, but I completely forgot to buy some. But luckily, I've got some pita breads. Not the same at all, but they'll do just to dip in and, you know, use with the sauce. But that's entirely up to you. But now's the time to actually start preparing that. Um, I don't make them from scratch. I buy them. So you don't have to worry. I'm not going to go through, you know, a whole brand new from scratch recipe for naan bread and pita bread. So, yeah, get them going now. Okay, so that's it guys. The curry sauce is done, the rice is done, the pita breads are warming up. There's nothing else to do now but to serve it up. And there you go guys, that's it. Hope you all enjoyed. That's your chicken rice and curry, all served up, ready to go. Got your nice pizza breads. Hope you all enjoy guys. Okay guys, so that's it, the dish is served. I hope you all enjoyed the brand new episode of Cooking and Gaming Chat. Don't forget to please subscribe, rate and comment on the video. And that's it from me, there's nothing else to say, but bon appetit.